Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to another MK video. Today, I'm with a nice fun quick tutorial on Comfy UI and an update for Super Node for our simple Supier Upscale. So, we will use and talk about a set of custom Comfy UI nodes for performing basic post-processing effects. These effects can help to take the edge off AI imagery and make them feel more natural. We only have five nodes at the moment, but we will use two this time. So as you can see, we have here the GitHub node for Comfy UI ProPost. ProPost is the node that we will use. And as you know, the easiest way is using the Comfy UI manager to install this package. Just search for ProPost and click install. And you have for each node a description of parameter and also the link to the available library. You have a very cool node that's called Bilbo X's. This code is a heavily inspired from Bilbo X's work and I throw the link in the description. This plugin offers two preview modes for of each Prestard style and data. This mode keeps interface compact and offers a preview and a description when hovering a list context menu. And in VGen effect, we have just two parameters, one for the size of effect and another for the opacity. There are two parameters. The first one is the name of the LUT file to apply. Simply put your LUT files in LUTs directory. The second parameter is an option to set up the output in the log color space. For more information, please refer to the link in the description. So, you will also find a link for Film Grainer, is an image processing algorithm that adds noise to an image resembling photographic film gray. So well, we have right here our simple superior upscale workflow, which is available on Gumroad Lake. And because two updates, one added a better way to load the SDXL model, which also allows using LORAS. The old node will remain for now to not break old workflows, and it is dubbed legacy along with the single node. But sometimes the old workflow break with the old node. The second update is for prune models. It's now available in safe tensors format. So all you have to do is to search for the Supier Model Loader V2 and add a load checkpoint and connect them in place of the old Supier model. After that, we move to the next side to begin our work. All we need is two node. So we right click and search for Pro Post. And we have three items, camera effects, blur effects, and color grading. So we're going to add this post vignette first, and then the same thing with pro post apply lot. A lot. So we're going to go image to image. And what I'm going to do is to do a compare ourselves in the image to let's bring up that compare, a compare a node from RG3. And for the same work, you can use Billbox. It provides a convenient way to compose photorealistic prompts into Comfy UI. I show here a preview of the assembled prompt, and the link for the example is on the description. It's really easy to use. So, now, before returning to our work, let's test some Cubelut and see how it works on images. You need LUT files for the work, and you can collect it over the internet. Don't worry about that. I put a link for some LUT file in the description for you. LUTs will add a beautiful teal and film look to project, whether it's for film or photography. It has been specifically created for photographers and filmmakers. As you can see, there is a lot effect you can choose or add, and it used in AI-generated images to make them look more like real photographs, because plastic look with unnaturally smooth surfaces. Adding film grain can make such images look more interesting with a simple image processing algorithm that adds noise to an image resembling photographic film grain. The picture got better by blending in more grain in the shadows and raising the gamma slightly. 
the result looks like in a pleasant negative film photograph. The algorithm works by generating a grain base image and blending it with the image. The grain base is made with Gaussian random value pixels, rescaled to achieve a certain grain size. The rescaling also makes the random pixels fuse together slightly, making them look more like actual grain. A configurable level of color noise can be added to the grain base. The blending of the grain and the image can be adjusted in intensity for highlights and shadows. Statistical analysis of real photographs was done and used for developing the blending profile. So, I'm trying to explain why we use these methods. But enough talking, it's time for us to get back to work. Don't forget, as we see in the comparison images, it is possible to adjust the parameters. This is important to achieve the desired results. So, let's go. So, now, here is how I organize the workflow after updating Supier node. I tack the Supier model new safe tensors. So you find Supier nodes in purple, load checkpoint, and load image. I choose a 512 size for small resolution. I color Supier nodes parameters on green and make pro post nodes black and Q propped. It's take time. That why I put directly the generation. So it's all done. And here's the original image compare with the LUT applied. The new image with the effect is with just a hint of color in there. So you can master around with this. It looks good either way, but LUTs are a great way to add some touches to your images and they get you know enhanced how you want it and degrade them how you want. So, as you can see, the vignette is basically going to make a blurry around the edges. It's like a framing with blur. Here's the parameters I use. 0.01 on all keys. 0.01 in the intensity. 0.01 in the center X and the center Y. So, I like to compare with the node compare. It's from RG3 node. You can easily see the difference and play with it. So if you like the video, make sure you do like and subscribe to the channel. We want to hit 1K soon so that we can be, you know, keep growing and sharing the AI knowledge. So keep in touch and see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So keep in touch.